All right, so today I'm going to be installing the Beamer Supplies, now known as uh, Motive Supplies head unit into my 2009 BMW 335i Coupe. So I got the 10.25 inch model and my car does not have iDrive to begin with. So this will involve cutting up my dashboard a little bit and it'll kind of have that sort of NBT uh, system look where it kind of sticks up the screen from the dashboard. Uh, so this is the unit itself. It's pretty simple, just the screen. You can see on the bottom here, we have our uh, connections and the areas where our mounting bracket will attach. And that's some nice trim around the edge. So you kind of keep a sort of OEM look with this. I've already gone ahead and done the unboxing, but I'll run through all of the uh, cables and whatnot right here quickly. So you can get an idea of what uh, the installation will involve. And Motive Supplies makes a lot of cool stuff, uh, tech upgrades for a lot of your uh, BMWs. So I'll leave a link to their store in the uh, description of this video if you want to check them out. I'll definitely be purchasing some more products from them in the future and I'm excited uh, to see how this will kind of modernize my vehicle. So this does include features like CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as navigation, radio, Bluetooth, etc. All that kind of good stuff. You can really do a lot of stuff with this because it is kind of an Android system. And I'll show you some of the features I uh, purchased as well. So moving over here, sorry for my lack of a uh, workbench, I'll just start over here. This is um, the mounting bracket that will be screwed on to uh, the screen itself that we'll use to attach to the car. Right here, we have a GPS dongle. I don't think I'm going to be using the GPS feature. It is actually a pretty cool thing. You can upload like GPS data to uh, the unit itself as well as use this antenna. So if your phone is offline or dead for some reason and you don't want to use Google Maps or something through CarPlay, this is a great option, but I don't think I'm I going to install it in my vehicle. So this is the uh, aux cable. This just is the basically the audio out. It connects kind of like an auxiliary device, so that's how you'll be uh, connecting the unit. Here, they include a little SD card, which is really awesome, so I'll be uh, installing this in it as well. And then here, this is an external microphone. Uh, Motive Supplies told me these aren't really necessary just because the kind of integrated microphone is good enough for a lot of this stuff, so this I'll be uh, emitting as well. And then moving over here, uh, they include some installation tools to pry out your uh, existing radio to perform the uh, installation in terms of the wires. And over here, I believe this is a uh, kind of upgraded uh, radio receiver, so if you want to use radio through uh, the head unit, you can do that, and I think this will let you get some more stations. Over here, these are the mounting screws for the bracket to attach it to the head unit itself. And then this is the main harness. This is what's going to take up most of our uh, time in the installation here. So it kind of intercepts the existing radio to give power to it. And basically all of these cables are going to connect to here and we'll hide these behind uh, the existing radio. And then over here, this looks like what you would use, I believe, if you have a DVR. Uh, I need to double check that and make sure it might connect to the uh, backup camera as well, but I'll figure that out. Again, more uh, cables. These are the USB cables, so there'll be a USB, a few USB ends if you want to use wired CarPlay. So it supports wireless and wired CarPlay. And the nice thing about that is you don't need a dongle like a lot of these head units include. It's built in, and if you want to uh, make it wired, you can run a cable probably out of the out of the glove box. And then moving over here, this is the backup camera, which is really cool. So I'll open that up right now. And basically you can see it's just like a trunk handle. So this will kind of sit, this will replace your um, existing trunk handle. And basically you keep maintain the kind of open functionality. You can see in the back, uh, the little button here. But so this will add the uh, rear view camera to the car, which is super awesome. I'm really happy about that. And uh, basically, you just run this under the trunk, run the wires back into the car. Uh, good as easy as that. And then here is kind of cool is the like iDrive controller. It kind of mimics the look of the OEM one and it replaces the uh, tray in your center console. So that's really cool. I'll be installing this. It should give us some like extra functionality. So uh, that should be cool. And then looking, this is our uh, installation template. So basically, what you do is you this is adhesive, you lay it down on 
uh, your dash, you stick it on, and then you can use like a Dremel to cut out the hole for the uh, new unit. But I am gonna be basically installing the unit without cutting first, just to make sure everything's working as it should. Once we're uh, happy with how it's running, we'll go ahead and drill the hole and kind of uh, install it fully. So that kind of is an overview of this unit, what it has to offer. I'm really excited about this, so uh, let's go get going and we'll uh, put it in the car and uh, see how it works. All right, so getting started with the installation is pretty simple. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is unplug your disconnect your battery so you don't have to worry about shorting out anything while you're installing the unit. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, you're gonna need a 3 8 millimeter or 3 8 socket. I believe it's a 10 millimeter. I don't have my 10 millimeter, but 3 8 will work. And I'll disconnect the uh, negative terminal and that should do just what we need. So taking off the panel here, twist the knob. You can pull the panel off, slide that over, and then you're just gonna wanna go right on here and remove your terminal. You don't have to take the nut fully off, just enough to kind of loosen so you can pull up. And there we go, battery is disconnected. So now we should be good to go and uh, start inside. Important tip, when you're doing anything that involves disconnecting the battery for a long time, put something in the trunk because if you close the trunk while the battery's disconnected, it's a big hassle uh, to get it back open. So I'm gonna put a rag uh, just right here. So if the trunk accidentally closes, we don't have to worry about it. Uh, locking and we don't have to worry about getting it back open. All right, with the battery disconnected, I am in the car and we're gonna start by removing uh, the interior trim piece here, as well as the one here. Uh, so to do that, I will be using a uh, plastic pry tool and just kind of get under and you can work your way around it and uh, get that trim off. I'll start up here and then I'll move down here. It is important to note that with the pieces here, as well as the start button, there are two cables. So you don't want to yank this off very quickly. You do want to take your time and you're going to want to work your hands in behind to kind of pry those cables out so you're not breaking anything. You can kind of see, pops out pretty easily. Kind of work our way around here. Uh, I'll reach under here and grab this off. Just going to wiggle it out. There's one. And this is still kind of on on the end. Almost out. There we go. And then we can see under here, we have some cables. Just kind of got to use your hands. Be careful not to plug in the cables too much. There's one. The other one's really in here. So again, just kind of working hand in here to now we can see oh, we have our trim piece off and there's that one so uh, I'll take this off and we'll get working in the center console. The center console piece is a little easier to take out you're gonna want to start by removing uh, the where your shift boot goes so you can just kind of pull it up with your hands and get all the edges out under here be careful it is kind of a delicate piece but it does pop out pretty easily. There we go. Don't take it fully off. You can just kind of see it sits up like this. You're just gonna to wanna to work it around once you get this off. So to take this off, you can kind of pry. I like to start over here. You wanna have the uh, center armrest open. There we go. Pull up. And then just kind of working your hands around. Your pry tool over here as well. There we go. I'm actually going to briefly uh, connect my battery so I can put the car in drive so it's easier to take out uh, the shift boot. All right, I've acquired my start button and I'm going to go put that back on so I can get the car in drive.
power's off, this is out, now we're ready to go. All right, with the trim removed, we're gonna wanna take out the original radio. Basically the way this works is this is kind of pressure fit in here and then the top one is kind of screwed in. So if you can probably use your fingers, I might end up using the pry tool. Uh, just to kind of pry this boat. Wow, that was easier than I thought. Just pry that bottom part off. And then we'll want to remove uh, the cables here eventually, but we're just going to set it down for now. There are one, two screws on this top part. If we just unscrew those, it's a Phillips. Uh, we should be able to uh, completely remove everything. So I'm going to do that and get right back to you. So there are a few, three actually, cables behind this. I can't get a really good angle on it, so I'm just going to turn the camera off and kind of get my hand behind here and remove the uh, three wires that connect to the radio. And then once that's done, we should be able to uh, start installing the new unit. All right, so the old radio is out. You can see on the back, there's one major harness here, and then there's the other uh, radio connector on this side. Put this down here. And as far as disconnecting this is concerned, so this big loom here, there's a kind of a sliding clip and there's two uh, kind of push tabs here and you're gonna to wanna to push the tabs and then slide this away and that should remove that clip. And then the second one right here, you can see there's just a tab uh, right here. And if you push that, it should slide right off. So uh, with that removed, we're ready to kind of start connecting the new harness to the old one. Uh, so this is the new harness here. And you can see there is there are two kind of missing uh, things for the fiber optic system. So you can see in the original one that we have this black and this green cable right here. The On the outer edge, the black goes on the top, the green goes on the bottom. And we're going to want to use a pick tool and push these out and transfer them to uh, the new cable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just ensure they're in the same positions, right? So black one on the top outer edge, green one on the bottom outer edge. And you can see on the new motive harness is exactly the same thing so black top outer edge green bottom outer edge so i'm going to do that now and i'll get right back to you all right so i got these removed and i wanted to illustrate a little bit how you remove it so i actually originally thought these were two separate like pins you would remove but it's actually one harness so it's pretty simple so you can see on this side uh, right here there are these two kind of push areas so all i really needed to do uh, was take a pick tool and push right down there on the outer um, the outer tab, and then the uh, whole harness with both cables came out simultaneously at the same time. Don't make the mistake I did and start poking it with the pry tool and pushing it out. You'll just want to remove that whole uh, that whole. All right, so with that done, we're gonna connect the cables. So basically, all this is doing is intercepting kind of what we have now and kind of passing it onto the motive unit. So this is our existing radio harness. Uh, this is where we fed the uh, green and black. Uh, fiber optic cables and this is the kind of interceptor on the motive harness and you can see in here there's this kind of black area with nothing in it and you can see in the OEM harness there's that area with the four uh, holes where we removed the fiber optic cables so those are going to want to line up and that helps us align uh, the new motive harness and we're just going to connect these two together and then we'll be ready to uh, hook it up to, uh, to our uh, head unit. So don't try to shove this in. It's pretty simple. Just kind of get it as snug as you can manually. And then you're gonna to wanna to slide uh, the lever up to really get it in there. It's kind of a two-handed operation because you wanna make sure you get it really level. Uh, even the instructions say this is kind of a difficult thing that takes some force, but once you get it in there, you get it in there. And it should hear a click. There we go. You can see we are all aligned in here and the clip is nice and snug. Make sure you get the clip snug. You don't want that loose. That'll cause problems for you uh, down the line. All right, so with that, it looks like we're actually ready uh, to test the screen. So this cable here is pretty much the only thing that connects to the screen. If you're gonna use the GPS antenna or the kind of this external dongle that allows you to connect different like audio devices, microphones, etc., cetera, uh, that will also be connected. I'm not going to go in and uh, do this in my car, so I'm just going to really connect uh, the main harness here now, uh, make sure it works, and then once we can conf confirm that, I'll make sure everything else gets wired up, and then we'll uh, start cutting. And I totally forgot in explaining this that you do want to use the uh, dongle here and just connect the original radio, uh, or this will not work. So I'll connect the radio 
in the uh, original antenna with this guy, and then we'll be able to test. So on the screen itself, you can see it has one main port here that says CarPlay Auto, and then uh, we can add our harness in here. This one just goes right on the top. Slide in pretty easily. I believe it just clicked in, so I think that is really all that needs to be done. And then you can see here, if we decide to use uh, the USB, I do recommend you do this and just put it in your glove box, even if you don't have any plans to do that right now. I think it's just kind of a smart thing to do, because if you want to add another device later, uh, it's much easier. So this, I believe, will connect to here. Yep, the one on the right, or the left. And then I'll connect there. I'll connect that a little bit later. I'm just showing you all the kind of finishing connections that go to the screen. And then assuming you were to use the uh, kind of like dirt external dongle with all the audio uh, DVR kind of interface stuff, you just plug that one in here. And I believe that's everything. So I'm gonna go uh, plug the battery back in and we'll fire it up. All right, so I have my radio and antenna connected and it's kind of teetering here precariously. And I'm going to plug in the battery and we will see if we can get the screen to work. All right, so I'll put the key in and turn on the ignition, see if our uh, screen here will light up. Oh, there we go. Booting. Oh, that's awesome. So that's a success. So I think with that, we'll kind of finalize a lot of the wiring as well as uh, get cutting these holes. So I think there'll be a little setup screen here. And I'm just going to test to make sure the audio works as well. And once we confirm that, uh, we'll be good to get this thing fully installed. So I do want to add that when you are connecting this, usually the audio out is connected to the audio in right here on the harness. However, I just booted it up and I wasn't getting any sound through this. And I'm not sure if it was because I poked that um, fiber optic cable in the wrong way, but I was not getting audio uh, directly in. So what I did is they include a an additional like auxiliary cable and you can just run that under here and then plug it right into uh, in your glove box to the auxiliary in there so that's what i did i'm getting sound i feel good about it so uh i'm gonna go ahead and we'll need to reinstall the dash piece here and then use that to mark our template for cutting so i'll get back to you when that's uh ready to go all right now we're at probably the scariest part of the installation so we're going to be putting on the template here and cut open our dash. Uh, so this template's kind of interesting. So you take off this bottom piece first and you stick that on here, kind of aligned with the air conditioner. And then you take the top piece off separately, align it with the first piece, and that should be good. I'm wondering if this will stick. Other people I've seen have done this. It didn't stick super well, but hoping for the best here. So I'm peeling off the template and I will lay it down and we will get ready to cut. It's pretty sticky. I don't have a super big worry that this will not stick super well, but here's the piece. Our interior trim is back installed. And as you can see, so the air conditioning bent vent border is kind of what we're looking at. It's kind of a point of reference here. So we're looking at sort of like right here is about where we want to be. And then this middle square kind of will go to get it centered. So it looks like we'll want to be, let's align this first actually, we'll align. So that's kind of right, we want this to go kind of right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tape this on just to make sure it's really kind of on there. I'm going to make sure it's really kind of like pressed up against the end because once it's kind of pressed up, it aligns pretty nicely. So I just want to make sure we kind of keep that consistent when we're on here. So I'm going to tape it up a little bit and then we'll put the top piece on.
All right, with that on, I'm gonna go get a knife and start cutting. All right, I've acquired my knife. I'm going to start slicing into my dash, I suppose. So this is centered. That's on the vent. Make my first cut. Wow, that's soft. I have the template off and I'm just gonna keep going at it with the knife here and try to take some pieces off. So as far as getting this stuff out of here is concerned, you can kind of see I pulled up a layer of this with the screwdriver and you can see there's like a hard plastic underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to pry up as much as I can with the screwdriver and then I'll go back with the Dremel. So as you can kind of see here, I've been working with the screwdriver to kind of get all this foam out. And now that I have a good amount of area clear, it'll be easier to go along with the Dremel and cut those edges. All right, so after a little work with the Dremel, uh, I got it to a point where it's a hole. Um, so I guess the next step for me is there's still pretty some, uh, some pretty rough edges. So I'm going to use a different disc to just kind of sand that off and smooth up these, excuse me, edges. And then we'll go ahead and try uh, fitting this in and see how it fits. All right. So with that done, we're ready to kind of test fit. I imagine I'm going to need to Dremel out some more, but, uh, we're going to start putting it in just to see. So there are two tabs on the... Uh, back of this so we're going to want to make sure those get in first and then we'll try to wiggle in the front so as i try to fit this it's occurred to me that it's probably helpful to install the center bracket just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like in terms of centering i just want to make sure i'm not like needlessly uh drilling or dremeling when i don't know what the center is so i'm going to attach the bracket you can see there are three holes in each side We'll just kind of lay this over the top. The little plus kind of works as a centering. So you just lay that over and then you'll screw, screw in the uh, three holes. It should be a Phillips head and I'm going to do that and keep aligning and I'll get back to you when I have it in a good spot. All right, it is day two of installing the Motive Supplies head unit. I'm still uh, working on getting this fit in properly and I've discovered kind of a few things in while taking a break and kind of thinking about how we want to do this. And the first thing is I watched some other uh, people installing this and kind of noticed a few things. So there's some people who make an effort to really try to get this to fit in really snug while others kind of go for drill the hole out a little bit bigger and just kind of have it fit in really nicely. And the issue, you can see the unit here, don't want to scratch the screen. Um, you can see the issue here is there are tabs right here, these guys, and they're pretty fragile. So they're kind of held on by these two metal bits and then a plastic piece as well. And you can see in the front, my tabs are gone. And that's because I was, they really get pressure put on them when you're uh, trying to get this fit in. So I removed them actually just for testing. But I would highly recommend putting like a bag or something right here just below because the first tab fell off on me and it took me quite a while to find it. So just make sure you're making an effort to uh, keep track of those and not lose them into the depths of, uh, of your car. So that was one of the things I noticed. So I'm going to kind of opt for going for a little bit looser of a fit. I don't really want to jam these in here just because these clips are so delicate. 
And then the other thing I learned is a lot of people take uh, adhesive like 3M tape around the lip here to kind of get it more secure. And I definitely think I'm going to have to do that as well just because of how it has a little bit of play when you move it around in the front. Uh, so basically what we're going to do today is kind of find a spot where it sits flush by continuing to dremel out the hole here. And then once we kind of find that point, we'll uh, put some three or some adhesive tape on uh, the ends of the trim here and get it fit in nice and snug. All right, so a quick update. I'm pretty happy with the hole now and I've kind of, as you can see, cleaned up a little bit in here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna stick with this. I'm not gonna play with too much more trimming. I'm a little too far out over here, so I need to be really careful putting it on to make sure you can't see uh, into the hole. But I'm thinking with some double-sided tape, it'll look pretty good. The only weird thing is it is a little crooked on mine. It does kind of go a little down this way. I'm, it's not really noticeable, but it does kind of affect how flush it sits. Again, I think it's just gonna kind of take some working in uh, to get it the way I want, but I think this is the best I'm gonna get it, so I'm gonna go for it. And then as far as other stuff, I've run this cable out through here, the, this guy, this connects directly to the head unit, and this has, as you can see on the other end, the USB uh, cables to connect to the unit. So that's ran in my glove box, so I don't have to worry about uh, that anymore. And I'm just making sure I'm kind of, everything else is kind of lined up. I have, uh, the only really other cord I'm gonna make sure I need to have is the uh, camera in, so that's the big one I'm focusing on. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this mounted up. I'll test fit it one more time, and then I'll get back to you when I'm ready to put on the tape and get ready to finally install it. All right, so it's kind of final install time now. I'm gonna start by cleaning it with a little uh, Simple Green. I'm gonna take this out. So we'll clean it with a little Simple Green just to make sure any double-sided tape sticks on really well. Then we're gonna apply the double-sided tape off the, uh, well, it's not connected. Then we're gonna connect the wires once the double-sided tape is on. I think that's the best way, because you cannot be very aware that you cannot put the wires in once the unit is in. Well, you probably can, but it will be a nightmare, so I do not recommend attempting that. A little bit of simple green will clean this off really nice and promote the best kind of stick we can get with our uh, adhesive. So that's pretty good. Put my simple green away. And then now we are going to uh, get the unit kind of stuck up. And so these are the cables we're connecting to it again. We have the one that goes to the USB as well as the main harness, which is hiding from me at the moment. Here it is. As well as the main harness. So they're going to run up through here, kind of like this, and connect. So we'll, I'll leave them up out here and just kind of let them dangle. But we'll connect these uh, once we get it all kind of adhesived up. And then we're, we're good to go. It's a little scary <laughs> uh, thinking about getting this uh, all in, but it shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to get my Torx ready as well so I can get the uh, screws in. Uh, that go in right here when uh, we actually get the unit installed. So I'll get my screwdriver and then we're ready. All right, so since we've last talked, I have kind of 3M adhesive taped all around the edges uh, of the trim here. So hopefully that'll help us kind of keep it in place and keep it flush. So with that, I'm going to peel off the back of the sticky tape and then attach the cables and then I think we're kind of uh, good to install. All right, I have successfully undid the backs of my sticky tape here, so I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna start here by connecting the cables to the back, and then, uh, then we're good. So the question is, do we run it under here or over? Does it matter? I'm not totally sure. I don't think it does. So I'll connect this one first. I think it should run it under. I don't know. Uh, if I run it under, I do. Yeah, we'll run it under. If you can see, yeah, we're going to run it under this metal. Right, that gave me a satisfying 
quick. I'm gonna go in one more time and really make sure we're in. Then we're gonna go run this guy under as well. And then we have to roll it over and then it should just click in nicely there. Again, just gonna go in with my fingers and make sure all the cables are in. Should I test it now? That's probably smart. Oh, it's booting. Ugh. I think we're working. Now we're loading. And we're on. Connected to my phone. Let's try playing some music from here. I don't have the radio connected. Oh, but it is working, so I'm pretty confident it will when uh, I plug things up. So. Or should I plug in the radio? I think we're fine. I'm going to risk it. All right. So that said, we will go ahead and get this fitted on. Um, trying to think of any other precautions I can take preemptively. I don't think there are. The only one thing is I'll put my bag back down to catch the brackets in the case they do... Uh, decide to fall. So here we go. I'm kind of going under, getting the back clips on. Let me go forward, folding it in, getting the, making sure the front clips stay in. with that. The tape, I'll be honest, the tape is not really doing anything at all. I think I'm going to put the screw in. I think that'll help. Whew. This is one of the more frustrating <laughs> installations I've done in this car. This screw is going to be a nightmare. All right, so I got it uh, screwed in here. <laughs> well, that bracket is not going to be joining us in this head unit. <laughs> oh, well, the video makes for good timing. All right. Um, well, I got the head unit in. It's that bracket aside, we're pretty sturdy. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. You can tell it's a little crooked, and the only spot you can see is if you look right under there, there's a tiny gap, and you can see the hole. But aside from that, on the top, it looks pretty darn flush and really nice and clean and kind of OEM. So. I'm really happy with this, so I'm excited to see uh, what it's like when we get it turned on here. So I'm going to go ahead and start buttoning things up. I'll clean up in here a little bit. And uh, so the big thing next is, so we have all of our wires run. And then the next big thing is we want to clean up back here. So we really want to get it so, well, there's as least the least amount of clutter possible. Just because we still have air vents back here, our radio still needs to go in that's gonna kind of be of, uh, of some importance. So I'm gonna get some zip ties, I think, and really try to clean this up as much as I can. So I'm going to do that and I will get back to you when uh, it's a little cleaner in here. And then the only big thing you wanna make note of is don't assemble everything until you connect your rear view camera. So you don't have to run the wire right away, but you definitely want to 
plug in the wire and at least get it into your glove box so you can start running it uh, down. So I'll do that. I'll vacuum up a little bit and get on it. So it looks like for the, let me see if you can see, the wires in here that come down from the head unit. So the vent from the center uh, goes right into these holes, so you can't run down the middle. So I've opted to run them kind of on the right, and I'll zip tie it in a minute to kind of clean it up a bit. Uh, but first I'm going to install the included uh, video cable for the rear view camera. So I'm going to undo this guy. I didn't realize I needed to connect the power. I assumed I would tap into the rear brake light, but it actually looks like the head unit itself provides uh, power directly. So what that means for us is, just like on this side where there's the red wire, there's another one that is attached to the head unit itself. We'll solder the two together, and that should give us power here, which we can then uh, solder to the included wire uh, on the camera. Uh, but as you can see on the camera wire, we have a red line here, and then coming directly from the head unit, uh, there's also a red line here. So what we want to do is just strip these down, solder them together, and I'm going to put some uh, heat shrink wrap over the top just so the connection's nice and secure. And then that should be all we need to do on this end, and then the remaining end we can do uh, once from we have the wire run out to the trunk. So I'm going to go uh, get started on the soldering here. All right, so I went ahead and soldered these up. I used too small of heat shrink tubing here, so it's actually just electrical taped. Uh, but this red is connected to this red. And then on the camera end, we have properly heat shrinked uh, the other two reds connected here uh, that go to the camera itself. So with the wires mostly aside and the inside, we're going to get rid of this white one by just zip tying it away. This one is unused for us, so we will not care about it. We can just kind of tuck this in the back uh, once it's zip tied. Again, just making an effort to really keep it as clean as uh, possible. There we go. This I can just kind of throw, throw back here, make an effort to kind of keep it as out of the way as I can get it. Uh, yeah, we just want to keep it away from the sliders on the radio. That gets rid of one. That gets rid of the big one, actually. And then these ones will kind of be the remaining. And this we're going to just kind of tuck back as far as we can in here. If I could get it below here, that'd be even nicer, but I don't think it's possible. Oh, it is. That was wrong. Uh, if I can get it up here, that would probably be the best spot. Yeah, we can. And then again, just pushing everything kind of as far as we can in. It's not going to be perfect. I don't really <laughs> expect it to be. Um, we do need this guy. We want to run it. Let's think about this. We want this to run through here, so we'll... We don't have that much room, actually. Uh, so we'll run this kind of behind, and then we'll pull it out and then connect it. That'll kind of give us the best. And this needs to also run through the bottom here, so I didn't even do that right. We're gonna run this, this guy, kind of through the bottom of this here. It should, it's kind of foam, so it just pushes. I've run wires here many times before when I had a tablet. Uh, mounted, mounted in here, um, but yeah, let's we'll we'll push it, I'll feel it, I'll hit the, I feel it, and we got it, <laughs> working in this interior of these cars, you'll cut your hands, 
like crazy. All this brittle plastic everywhere. So we'll kind of run it up the back. Got it. Oh. Running these wires is quite an adventure. Just give it some slack. Oh, we don't have that much slack to give. Sorry. We actually <laughs> want to pull it the other way a little bit now that it's in here. Give our slack back. Yeah, there we go. There, now there's kind of has enough room for everything. Our audio is good. It's in there. Uh, this kind of needs to go up again, like I mentioned. This should kind of give us the most room that we can have back here. Just looking at where the radio is going to go, you can already tell this is going to be a tight squeeze. I think this big block will probably be the hardest bit. All right, so good news. I managed to get this rat's nest of cables kind of together and pushed in the back and I'm pretty happy. I actually had to end up running the main cable from the head unit to the left and then all the other ones on the right. And that seems to allow me enough space to kind of get done when I need done. So I'm gonna go zip tie. So I'm gonna go zip tie the cables on the right and then I think we'll be good to kind of put the center trim back on. There you go. I'm pretty sure this will be okay. I'm just going to test fit it really quickly and see if it will, but I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, this will fit. Sweet. One more test to make sure the radio works. Yep. So we're working in the music department. going to kind of finally install everything permanently. So to do that, this is the kind of tricky bit. Uh, we'll need to get the start button back in, but getting these guys in, the center console for the heat, is a little tricky, uh, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we want to get the start button in uh, first here. That start button's easy. Just get it in the right direction. And you can just kind of hold it on the back. Get that nice and snug. It should click. There we go. Start buttons in. There we go. Okay. There's one. There's two. Okay. So these are kind of tricky. You kind of just have to do it by feel. There's not a lot of whole lot of technique here but you want to do the right one or, or the top one first and again you can just kind of feel it now you push and pray there's that one and then we go to the other side and start working on those clips There we go. That is our trim installed. Wow, this is a lot. Okay, with the trim installed, we can 
tighten up our screws on the radio. Uh, there should be one, two of them, Phillips. And then we'll install the uh, AC back in. And then we should be totally good to go. Two, tighten them. Don't go too tight on these, just nice and snug. There you go, radio's in. And then with that, our climate controls, which again, just kind of snap in, bam. For the center console trim, I'm wondering what I should do with the slack, because that's kind of the last piece, uh, and kind of getting the head unit installed. And I'm thinking I leave the majority of the slack in the, glove, in the uh, center console. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'll just kind of, you just really wanna tuck the wire in on the side, just kind of avoiding as much stuff as you can. There's not a whole lot you can do. Um, and I'm gonna wipe the edges down here. All right, so I'm going to put the center console trim in, which means we have to put the car into drive, which means I have to apologize to my neighbors for the noise, but quick. Uh, cold start here. Oh, we're blowing uh, dust through the vents. Threading this through. Opening our compartment. shifter shift boots back so that's really it um we're dialed in on this uh motive supplies head unit i will come back a little bit later uh and show you guys how to install the reverse camera as far as routing is concerned this is going to be a little tricky to show uh, but as you saw earlier i ran the wire right out through here and i've just tucked it along under the edge of this panel it's really easy to get it down and then in the back here i'll remove my sunshade hold on in the back here you can see it's kind of sticking out right here. I'm going to run it under my rear seat delete. And then usually, if you had this set up with the rear seats in your E92, uh, you'd want to remove the left seat. I guess you could do the right one. No, you actually have to do the left one because the wiring harness comes out there. Uh, but I've removed your left seat and this corner panel as well. Because this corner panel is kind of where all of the wires are going to connect in your trunk, so that'll be a good place to run it out. So I'm gonna lift up my rear seat delete and run the wire right through here. I don't think I'm gonna have a good enough angle to really show it, uh, but once I get in the trunk, I'll show you guys where the wire's hanging out and what we're gonna do with the rest of it. So I actually have somewhat of a change of heart in doing this. It occurred to me that just running this wire down the center is probably pretty good because there's this area right under here and this is pretty pliable and I can just run it through here right under the uh, battery and then kind of up and then out towards the trunk where we need it to go, uh, which is right here. So I'm gonna do that and I'll get back to you when uh, that's all done. All right, so I've got my wire running right through here. So now I'm gonna route it as around the battery as I can, probably right up uh, through here. And now the next step is we want it to come out right here at this grommet because that allows us to get into the trunk, which is right here. It seems that most people when installing this do have trouble getting this to go through this grommet properly just because of the size of the RCA connector. So I'm going to probably run it outside of this and just kind of zip tie it around. I think that's probably my best bet. All right, with this done, I'm going to actually take off the kind of padding paneling here uh, on the trunk. These are just a bunch of clips. I seem to have a weird variety of these. I imagine yours will be more normal on your cars, but all right, so again, I'm gonna start taking off these clips. Just go around, should be able to pry them off like, like this, and there should be pins. Uh, you can see that looks right here. 
So I'm going to pry these off. And again, I do have some weird looking ones. So I imagine it might be different for me than it was for you. I have a lot of weird parts in my car. Uh, but anyways, continuing. should come off fairly nicely. Again, taking care to make sure I have all the clips accounted for. There we go. Ooh. There we go. The panel is off. So a quick note to self, this would be a lot easier in reverse in installing the hammer first and running the wire out as opposed to the way I'm doing it running it up because here where we install the camera, we have to run it all the way through here, but our wire is down here. So we're going to have to run it up through. So I'm thinking what my idea is, I'm going to probably get a string or maybe a clothes hanger and try to run it down and through here just so I have something to kind of work with and then I'll pull the wire through. I think that makes the most sense. And then just starting, you'll see where it comes out right here. You'll remove this rubber grommet. And then we have a big wiring harness right here. Same thing on the bottom. A uh, big wiring harness. This bottom one's on really tight. Anyways, I'll get this off and I'll get uh, back to you. So in this operation of running the wire, I think it'll be helpful to remove this panel here. So we are allowed to pull this trim back a little bit more because our wire is going to come kind of down into here and we want to be able to uh, access it. So I'm going to remove uh, this panel. So there's a clip here with a cover. So pop the cover off the flat head, pop the cover off the flat head, fill up screwdriver, and then there should be uh, some push plugs down here. I only have one because as I mentioned, my car is in a little rough shape in the pin department. As far as getting the cover off, there's just a, let me see if I can get you to see it, clip up here. Uh, just pry that off and then that should be it i believe in taking this piece off here so with that off you should be able to see the holes the two holes right out here and that's where we're going to run our wire through so we'll want to run it through there and then try to get it out here how we do that <laughs> might be a miracle but uh we'll get to work i think i'm going to do it with a clothes hanger might be the easiest just to pull it so I'm gonna get going with that. So as far as running the wires is concerned, so we have these two guys removed, and basically what I did is I took a clothes hanger and kind of bent it up and ran it up, and then I managed to get my hand in here and kind of grab it and pull it out. So basically what I can do then is take the wire, put some uh, blue tape around it, and then just kind of pull the clothes hanger out, and then it should leave me with the wire hanging out here, and then we should be able to pretty easily run it to uh, the trunk handle. So I'm gonna pull that. All right, so as you can see, the wire is going through here and is now kind of poking out here through the top. And you can see it's all the way through here. So I'm gonna attach it to my clothes hanger and then pull it up through here. Now I have a carbon fiber trunk and it appears this is gonna be slightly more interesting for me just because the holes for the trunk lights and the trunk handle aren't really OEM, so the fitment's not very good. And it, realized, it just occurred to me how bad it actually is but these lights are barely in and the handle doesn't appear to be very in uh, as well. So what I'm gonna do now is pop the handle off. Apparently all you should need is kind of a flat head just to pry underneath and it should pop off nicely. So I'm gonna do that now. Again, just going in with the flat head kind of right towards the middle. It should wanna pop off here. So a bit of an update. It turns out you just need a little bit more force than I was applying here with the trunk handle. It did pop out applying pressure from the top, so that's good. Uh, so the next step here is to remove the uh, connector here, which doesn't appear to have any tricky little pins you need to apply. So I'm gonna pull that out. We should be ready to install the new handle. All right, so now we're going to put on our new trunk handle, which should be fairly simple. Uh, the big thing is just wanna make sure we run our wires through. If you can see that, yeah. So we're just gonna run these through inside the trunk. Once those are in there, we can feel confident. Uh, where I'm on the other side, there's two little holes in the inside of the trunk. You want to get it on the right most, or the passenger side. And then again, here's our uh, connector. We'll just attach that to the uh, new 
blue and black one here. That should pop in pretty simply. And then again, running down through the piers. I'm trying to figure out which way this goes. This way, yeah, we go this way. Just kind of tucking everything in. This should, in theory, <laughs> in theory, fit right in. All right, so this video will be a, little, a lot different for me just because I have this carbon fiber trunk. It was quite a pain to get the trunk handle in. It should just pop in nice and easy like I've seen in a lot of the people with the OEM trunks. But for me, since the trunk original trunk handle just didn't really fit well into this new trunk, I had to do a lot of dremeling out of this hole that the body shop didn't do uh, to fit this in. But now that it's in, it's in there pretty nice. It's in there flush and it's in there tight. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we can uh, tuck in the wiring uh, in the inside of the trunk. So now that everything is kind of sealed in, we do wanna route all the wires and kind of make it look all nice. So I think my biggest complaint with this so far is the fact that the power cable has to, is not like already wired up. You have to solder it on like I did like this which also leaves kind of all this dangling mess of this wire they included to kind of do that. So with that, I'm gonna to have to kind of zip tie it together and I'm gonna hide it up here in the trunk just because there's not enough room to hide it down there. That would be ideal, but unfortunately I can't do that. So I'm gonna bundle it up and I'll try to zip tie it and hang it up in here. And then I have plenty of slack down here to kind of route everything as I need. So I'm gonna go bundle this up. All right, so now that we've confirmed everything is working and it does indeed work well, so that's awesome. I'm gonna put the Beauty Peaks back on and then we'll go ahead and route everything else up in the trunk. All right, so the last few steps here really are to uh, route this wire. So unfortunately, you can't really fit the wire through this just because the RCA connector is a little big. Uh, so what people tend to do is cut a slit right here and feed the wire through. That's actually what I'm gonna do here as well. Uh, I think I'm gonna put some like marine sealant like right through here, some black stuff just to make sure it's still watertight uh, but I think that's the best way to go about it so I'm gonna get my exacto knife and we'll cut through it. Let me zoom in here and you can kind of see I might not even need to use any uh, sealant here it's pretty tight but you can see oops the wires kind of feeding in through here there's just a little slit around we'll figure out if we want to put any sealing around it. So I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom, and once that's done, uh, I'll work on the wiring back inside the car. All right, so with the trunk buttoned up, you can see I just kind of zip-tied it and ran it down here. I am going to put a little bit of sealant here because it occurred to me that when water runs off, it's just going to go right here. So I think just a little dab of some black, like marine sealant will do me a lot of good. This one I'm not super concerned about just because it's on the uh, underside. But last step here is just kind of cleaning up these wires. So I'm gonna clean these up, just zip tie them kind of around and clean it up and away from the battery as much as I can. Then we're done. I'm, we'll fire it up and see how it looks. And there we have it. I tidied everything up. Everything is good and secure. So the rear view camera should be totally good to go. The, it was a fairly simple install as far as the rear view camera went. It was only kind of troublesome for me just because I had the carbon fiber trunk, but if you have a normal OEM trunk, I don't see anyone having that problem. So I think that's super awesome. And then as far as the rest of the install goes, again, biggest thing was cutting open the hole in the dash. And I still, you can kind of see, didn't get it totally aligned. So that's just the big thing. Be careful when you're cutting the hole. But aside from that, the install went really well, and I've been using the CarPlay for a few days and have been really happy. Um, I'll definitely do a full, like, in-depth kind of review, talking about the features, as well as kind of the pros and cons with going with the unit like this. Uh, but for now, I'll show you guys how the rear view camera works, and uh, that'll end up this video. So let me start up the car and put it in reverse. All right, so as you can see, the unit's already on, the car is now on. I'm going to put the car in reverse, and as you can see, we have the view of the road back there, as well as the lines, and you can see the steering wheel turns with the camera, and I'll be honest, I don't really understand 
how that works with the steering wheel. I don't know what information it's getting, but this works really well. I'm surprised again and again that I this works as well as it does. It really seems like an OEM system, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. All right, uh, so that concludes this video. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for uh, my full review of the Motive, Motive Supplies E92 